Hello and welcome to Jack Nicholas's greatest 18 holes of major championship golf. Whew, that was a mouthful. And this was developed by Accolades in 1988. And it's around about 1989 but by the time it had a release in the UK. And I believe it did have a cassette release, which um, most likely pretty horrendous to play because uh, this disc version that I'm playing here that's quite a bit of disc accessing. Um, and the game comes on two discs, and the second disc, the course disc, has two courses on it. One is a forest course, and one's more of a desert course. Or you can simply keep the program disc in, play, which I will do here, um, and that lets you play Jack Nicholas's greatest 18 holes from courses all around the world. And this is a game that I never had back in the day um, because I had leaderboards, uh, world class leaderboard, and you know they were the, the go to golf games on the C64. And I don't think many people would argue with that. Although I've read a few comments about this game, and some people seem to like it, seem to prefer it over leaderboards. But I don't, as we'll see. But doesn't mean I think it's a terrible game. Uh, we'll have a look. One of the big advantages it does have over leaderboard is the fact that it's not just stroke play. The leaderboard you can only play stroke play with up to four players. Um, and they've all got to be human players. But this version has computer players. But you can also play skins, which we'll come back to. Uh, we'll just stick with stroke play for now. Um, so I just put your name in. And you can pick you can pick male or female, which is I suppose pretty rare back in the day. Back for well, free tea anyway. And most games don't seem to care about that sort of thing. And you can pick a beginner skill, whatever. Don't think it affects too much, um, but the tea play does. But uh, the skill level is more for the computer opponents, I think. Um, press F1, we are done, and I'll speed up the loading a little bit in the old emulator, there we go, let's play around, so it's like leaderboard, you can go to a driving range and a practice screen and practice, we'll just play around. And before each hole, you get a bit of a blub from Jack Nicholas about the course, uh, about the hole, some tips, and you get an overhead view of the hole. Then we're on to the main play area. And right away you'll see one of the problems with this game is the fact that it's quite slow to render the holes. And when it does finish rendering, rendering the holes, you can see that yeah, they're a bit blocky. And it's a bit of a shame because actually there's more detail on the holes than there is in leaderboard games. Um, you know, in terms of the um, hole geography and the, the you know, the types of terrain, you know, it's not just, you know, different levels of rough and um, more detail in the bushes and trees and buildings, but you, you don't get to see that until you're a bit closer. But otherwise, the controls are pretty similar to leaderboard. You move, you move left and right at the top to aim, and you can move up and down, select your club at the bottom right. One of the nice features is it actually tells you how far the club goes. In leaderboard, you have to have the sheet in front of you, which has all the distances, or memorise them. Uh, most people who have played leaderboard over the years probably have memorised them. I know I have anyway. Um, and to the left is the swingometer, which functions exactly the same as leaderboard. It's just slightly bigger, which is a bit more useful, I think. And it's not a l depicted in a linear fashion, but uh, if you look at it, uh, the very top is a big red 
block, that's the overswing area we can hit more than 100%, but if you stop at the last green section, that's the 100%, then a bit lower down is our red thin line, that's 50%. So that's a good gauge. Um, and when the when you take the swing, um, you'll see where I stop the swing on to, then that's really, and if you, if you go too early or late, you hook or slice the ball, just let the leaderboard. Right, so let's start the swing. We've got 100%, then we stop it here. Oh, that's a bit late. I've sliced it a bit there. And you can see that the ball movement isn't that smooth. And the sound effects are terrible. Did you hear that sound effect? It was like something at a beachhead. It's a, yeah, in the water. So let's redo the shot. Which unfortunately means reloading the graphics, uh, re rendering the graphics, which is a bit annoying. Um, what I'll do is I'll just take less power. There you go, that's a better shot. Um, on to the next. One of the features I do like is the fact that you can press O, brings up the overhead again, but it doesn't render it in the main view, does it, underneath, which saves a bit of time. Doesn't have to render the whole thing again. Let's try a bit more power this time. Yeah, so if it goes into the overswing area, um, then when it comes down, it comes down much faster and it's a bit harder to time the shot. So yeah, the graphics are pretty blocky. But if I take my glasses, uh, if I take my glasses off, uh, the graphics look much better. Or look, <laughs> look more impressive. It's just got to squint your eyes or use a bit of imagination. But there is quite a bit more detail here than you find in the leaderboard games. And one of the other features is that it has a caddy, so it picks the club for you, which you can override, of course. But uh, Stick with that one. As the club comes down, I, th I think the swing on to bar moves slowly. You're not whacking the ball that you, you would when you drive it. Not doing too well here. Yeah, so I never had this back in the day, but I thought I'd take a look at some other golf games. So I've done all the leaderboard games. Uh, putting's quite easy here, you just aim the aim towards the hole. There's a bit at the bottom left of the status panel, gives you the break, which is even in this case, and it's a complete straight putt. Let's see if I can manage it. Ah, uh, gone right. So I first played this game on the Atari ST, and the ST version, the graphics are better. Just, um, they're certainly not that impressive either. It's, it's, um, it is just a bit faster. Uh, the gameplay is pretty much the same. And then we're onto the. Loading in the scorecards, then on to the next hole. Pretty standard stuff. What I'll do is... I shall quit, go back to the clubhouse. And quit again. Game, yes. Play again, yes. Takes me back to the main options. I'll insert the other course disc, hopefully. There we go, and um, we'll try one of the other courses. Go so, Desert Mountain. This time we'll play a skins game with two players. And we'll use the computer as the second player. Go so, player one again. And we'll have a computer player. There we go, and you can have, uh, you, you can move up and down to select different Opponents. Obviously, Jack N is going to be the best player, but we'll, we'll go for Nazi D. Why not? 
Okay. One when done. So this is a skins game, so the way skins works is it's not metal play or stroke play um, as such. This time each hole is worth a certain amount of money and the person that wins the hole, you know, with the, with the least amount of strokes earns that money. If the hole is drawn then it carries over to the next hole and you can win more money then. And the holes themselves are worth more money as you go down the course. The stakes get higher as you get towards the end. It's it's quite good. Um, it's nice to play something that isn't in leaderboard. Other golf games I've played have it. Not all of them, but um, I've been playing uh, Make Pros Golf that, that has skins. Uh, it has has quite a few different types of uh, gameplay. Might review that actually at some point. Quite enjoy that game. Again, it's another game I didn't have back in the day, so let's play around. So even though this is a a different type of terrain, it's supposed to be more desert type. Well, you can see it's a, it does look a bit different, but it's still pretty blocky. It's, it can't be easy making a a game engine like this on, on the C64. Um, go for it. But th there's more feature in terms of the, um, you know, it has paths and bushes. And uh, you can see, uh, once you get to the, the last hole, normally you can see the, um, the clubhouse, things like that. It's, it's just not sharply defined as leaderboard or the leaderboard games there. Yeah. So I've taken my shot, now the computer player takes her shot. So you can see there's like rocks there and stuff like that. Um, that's what I mean by the fact that there's more detail in the courses, but yeah, if you can make them out. There's not much more I can show you in this. Um, that's pretty much the whole game. I mean, if you've made it this far, you're probably thinking, yeah, I'd rather play leaderboards. And I agree. Um, if if I just want to blast my way around, uh, you know, a course, um, stroke play, absolutely, leaderboards. But if you want something different, if you want to play skins, or just want to play something that isn't leaderboard, then, you know, this isn't that bad. It's... Uh, it plays a lot better than it looks. Uh, I mean, it looks a bit rough. It uh, actually plays really well. Not a bad shot. So I'll give it... Um, I'll give it 7 out of 10. I mean, it's a pretty good game. I mean, don't, don't let the blocky graphics put you off. But, uh, or the I mean, the slowness might put you off. Uh, I wouldn't blame you for that. But uh, yeah, it's certainly worth a play. So seven out of ten for Jack Nicholas's eighteen greatest holes of championship golf, or something like that. And uh, see you in the next uh, video.